me. I'm Ron Funches, and we're all working on getting better. Dun, 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 we're going. Hi, guys. It's me. It's Ron Funches. Thank you for listening to my podcast. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're feeling strong. It's February. Getting into that beginning of the year. Starting to feel like, realize what we're going to be doing, what we're focusing on. You know, recovering from the end of the year. Me personally, I'm doing that. Recovering from my surgery. Getting back in the gym. Lifting again. Feeling weak, but feeling back active and at it. And that feels good. And I hope you are. Hope you're feeling strong. <laughs> um, I've been running into a couple people out in the middle of the street that just been talking to me about how uh, I was heading to the park with Robot and he and this dude stopped us and he told me how much he he um, liked my comedy and podcast and how much he liked my, my focus on health and that a lot of comedians don't do that and most comedians kind of focus on being uh, unhealthy and and and, and um, you know, being as uh, inactive as possible, and he liked my message, and um, I, I really appreciate it when people do that. Um, and I, I, one thing I've forgotten that we, I really enjoyed doing was the affirmations. So I just want to do a little bit of that if you need some right now. I just want to tell you, you're strong, you're powerful, you're wise, you're kind. You know, and you're going to go through struggles, through ups and downs. We all do, but keep focused. You know, things are going to happen. You're going to be focused on your diet. You're going to be active. You're going to be at it. Then something's going to come up and you're going to eat a little piece of cake with some ice cream. And then it's going to make your tummy hurt all night long. And then you can't even have sex with your robot. That's going to happen on occasion. But don't, don't, don't get mad at yourself. <laughs> Don't put yourself down. Don't get into a cycle of like, oh, I messed up again. I had a little bit of cake. Uh, you know, and even though it was the smallest, what I really liked is that it was the smallest amount of cake that I've had in a long time. You know, usually if I'm going to have some cake, I'm going to have some cake. I'm going to go to town. I'm going to put my bib on and eat some cake, you know, like a baby on its first birthday. <laughs> that's me with cake but i was like let me just i'm gonna have some halo top ice cream not even real ice cream and let me just and i got this little cake that we got because our friend our dear buddy uh x Pac, he got um put into the wwe hall of fame so i got him a little bit of weed and i got him some cake and um but he was too busy to show up for either so i ate some of that cake and i'm gonna smoke that weed <laughs> so i let my son have this because my mom and my son were like give us that cake uh so i gave them let them open it up and then i was like you know what i got this halo top let me just put a little bit a little sliver of cake and oh my god it made me feel so sick and i was just like this just not who i am anymore I can't fall back. I can't revert. You know, I can't regress into who I, who I used to be. And I think sometimes that happens to all of us. You know, we make so much progress. And then we're like, man, this is hard. And this is slow. And most of all, this is boring. And, and I want to go back to what it used to feel like when it was fun. And, and, and just do what things I want to do. Because it doesn't matter anyway, right? Things don't seem to be progressing. Uh, but then you get that tummy ache. And that's your body letting you know, hey, it doesn't even matter about the, what happens on the outside. We know what's right and we want to do the good, right thing and we want to be good and we want to be positive. Once you start, you know, when I when I wasn't eating healthy and I, didn't, I mean, I could eat anything, you know, I could I didn't I have been doing this joke lately about how robot uh, always wants me to drink water all the time and she makes me drink too two glasses of water when i start my day and before i go to the gym and when i get better from the gym and she's just all about my water intake and i didn't i remember time i don't think i was drinking water for like two years straight you know just had a, a dull onset jaundice that's the joke right now it's pretty good write me back let me know if you enjoyed it uh, but <laughs> But the point being, um, when when I was eating like that, I could eat anything because my body was just mining the nutrients out of what I was getting. And now that we are focused on eating well, my body's like, hey, this is what we like. This is what feels good. And when you go another way, we're going to let you know. So I hope you guys are staying focused. I know it's hard. I know there's so many hours in a day. 
and, and you probably got your co-workers having birthday parties uh, or they just are like hey let's just go with carl's jr you know get a western bacon cheese with the onion ring on it that was always my favorite when i worked at the bank uh, <laughs> but then you're just feeling sluggish all day and feeling horrible and you're undoing your progress as my trainer jorgen says it's like you know you're um you know good and getting healthy is like paying off a debt paying off a credit card debt and you got to pay it off little by little and and when you get off of it it's like splurging on your bill and, and when you look at it that way it makes it a little bit easier to focus but you know i've just been feeling a little bit uh, I try to, you know, be very positive with you guys, but also let you know when I'm feeling a little bit overwhelmed or um, uncertain about things. And I'm just uncertain about my my show right now. And I've been really, you guys know, I really want to make it, you know, show about my son and I and raising, a, being a single dad, son, kid with autism. And it's just right now, I just don't know. I have literally no idea. Um, and the, the silence is deafening to me. <laughs> so it's just making me, you know, a little nervous. But I'm trying to find better ways to cope with that because those things happen to all of us. And, and right lately, I've been coping with it by doing as many sets as possible. I did seven sets last week, and I'm trying to book a lot this week. And um, I'm just trying to control what I can. And, and get better at what I can. And, and I want to go out and do a tour this summer. Um, you guys should get ready for that. Um, email the podcast or just hit me up on Twitter. You know the email, gettingbetterpod at gmail. Twitter is at Ron Funches. And you can just tell me where you guys want to see us because we're really open to go anywhere. It's going to be me. I'm going to bring Gabe Dinger. You know, got to bring Gabe. And I'm going to bring Blair Saki because um, she's wonderful. Um, and we're going to have we'll unveil the tour name and we'll have a bunch of promotion as we get a bit closer. But right now, we're still in the planning phases. So if there's a place you want to see us that I don't normally travel, I'm open to it. I think I want to go to Huntsville, Alabama. Go see my buddy Conrad Thompson. Uh, we're open to any anywhere because it's going to be a tour just about being positivity bringing optimism to a, a very pessimistic world right now and just being real funny and working on new material so and right now i only got about 15 material minutes of material that i like 10 that the audience seems to like and um i'm gonna challenge myself to have a good 30 40 ready by the summer so that i can tour with it you know and that's a fun challenge right now and just Staying focused on the things I can, can't control because I can't control this business. This business is ever changing and I don't like to let it control my mood. Um, I like to um, realize that I'm very blessed to have the things that I already have. You know, there's so many comedians that don't have the things that I enjoy, like this house and um, the freedom to, to turn down gigs when, when I want to on occasion. And uh, and I, there's other comedians who are doing way, way better than I. But you just got to be grateful for what you have, you know. So that's my plan right now. And it's a lot easier when I had this realization um, a couple of days ago uh, that I am currently living 12 year old Ron Funches's dream. You know, like 12 year old Ron Funches would think I am absolutely killing it right now. Uh, and I will tell you why. I play video games like pretty much first thing in the morning for several hours a day and still pay a mortgage. I didn't think that was possible. My mom was pretty much adamant that that was impossible. Proved her wrong. That's why you live in the pool house. You can't even be in the main house. <laughs> uh i still smoke fair amount of pot i'm trying to be you know keeping my about my business and and about my acting and, and know when i can and can't do it that is an ever constant battle but you know that is fun for me that's the thing that 12 year old me love i got i got a big budded robot that is something 12 year old me would be very excited about um i the other day I was on a bill at the comedy store that had my name up there with Sarah Silverman and Sebastian and, and Mark Marin and, and, and me. And I'm like, man, 
that is literally 12 year old me dream come true and so i want to encourage you guys to think about that that what we're doing you know we get so caught up in the day-to-day and what other people have and 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 what's fashionable to have now and 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 being like oh i want a big house or anything like that but what did 12 year old you want you know what did the what did the little kid version of you want? Are you are you living up to that version of yourself? And 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 if you're not, what can you do to change your life in order to to be more like that? Because I don't and I don't mean be childish or be, you know, a petty person. That seems like actually more adult qualities. Uh, but just you know, children don't really lie. Children use are more hopeful. Children have their dreams. Um, and I believe you should you should believe in those dreams. I know Killer Mike says you should in his show, but that's just things we firmly disagree on. Maybe, hopefully, he will come on my podcast. But I don't. Who knows? <laughs> he might be too famous. But um, I'm just really really stoked about that, and that made me feel very happy and very and, and alleviated some of that stress of me being like, oh man, uh, who knows if I'll get to make this show? But it's just like, man. You're on shows all the time. Um, your people like your special. You made an hour comedy special. Um, these are all beautiful, beautiful things to just be excited about and to to let wash over you a little bit. And don't be so quick to, to just um, think that I need to move and accomplish the next thing. Um, so that's been something I'm trying to focus on. Uh, playing a lot of Apex Legends with my friends <laughs> in order to just be like, let's just relax and have fun. But, uh, you know, I'm still uncertain because I just really want to do that. And I feel it's more less like I want and more like my calling, you know, my passion. And uh, But sometimes you're wrong, you know? And sometimes no's are the best thing in your life in the long term. But, you know, things that are meant to be are meant to be. We'll find out. Stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> But all of it is kind of just wrapped up into one where, where it's just like, oh, I'm uncertain about my show and I feel uncertain in the gym and um, less strong in the gym. But I have my friends and my, my people around me. My you got to have that positive circle around you. They're like, hey, you're looking good, man. You're doing good. You're strong. Um, what the fuck did you expect to happen when you have a surgery and you can't work out? for a month and you're bedridden for for a while like did you expect that you would be as strong as you were it's like that's ridiculous and i guess that's just how we are sometimes you don't like to i just me personally i just don't like to regress you know i like i like seeing progress and i don't like seeing it and seeing it fade away but that's that's the, that's life that's the circle of life it's the circle can we get sued for that Halston? <laughs> It's a circle. <laughs> I should take those singing lessons. Um, is there any other news that I have? I don't think so, really. I'm just real, real excited about our guest today. Ooh, just rang our doorbell. Let me pause and go get it. Our guest this week is a good friend of mine. I enjoy her comedy. She is a rising star in comedy. She has a very strong voice um, in comedy. And uh, more than that, as you know, as I like to change my intros to just talk personally, she just like... <sighs> how I do I describe her as she is in the room um, <laughs> she's just a person who just says what she feels at all times even though sometimes you would be like hey maybe don't say that uh, but at the end of the day you gotta love someone like that because they're very authentic and genuine and, and just themselves even if it is at a detriment to themselves or their livelihood um, <laughs> But they're just also just because they're the type of people who have your back no matter what and who like you who for who you are. Um, and in this business, that is rare because there's so many people who who where you don't know why they like you um, and they pretend they like you for so many other reasons besides, hey, we think you could, we could make money off of you, which is if they would just say and be honest, you'd be like, OK, well, then at least you're fucking honest and we can make money together. But don't act like you're going to make money off me and not cut me in on this money. But she's not one of those people. She's just an honest person who is who she is. Fucking hilarious. A great person and a grinder. And that's what I really like about her is that she just a real go-getter. Gets what she wants and, and, and focuses hard and, and doesn't really focus on Hollywood or the games in it. 
or get caught up in what other people thinks that she should want, even the things I think she should want. Uh, but And I want to talk to her. It's going to be great to have a conversation with her because she'll probably say some fun, wild things, and I like that. It's Marcella Arguello. She'll be here in just a moment. Hi, Marcella. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Great. Thanks for coming. Thanks for having me. Um, we're here because I'm part of your promotional tour. You're part of my promotional tour. For your album, The Woke Bully. The Woke Bully. Um, I listened to it today. How'd you like it? I liked it a lot. I thought it showed a lot of growth in your comedy. I thought um, your rhythm was very strong and your ability to c- control the crowd um, had improved greatly. And... Um, your ability to pivot and that you knew like you knew i think because you know your material sometimes is going to get um varying reactions or extreme reactions depending on the yeah. subject matter and you you built in things to prepare for that yeah and i thought that was very um very smart thank you i appreciate it so that's what i thought about it what did you think about it i love it i'm i was exhausted with the material I've been doing it for so long, and Netflix didn't want it. Comedy Central didn't want it. So I was like, I'll just put it on an album and move on with this era of my jokes. Mm-hmm. How long have you been working on that material? Well, some of it's really... I mean, I've been doing stand-up for 13 years, and some of it's very old. Some of it is kind of new. Uh, I think there was one bit on there that was like... I hadn't been... It wasn't well-tested, which is part of why I kind of kept it in there, because I was like, I don't really want to keep doing this, but um, I liked it enough. And uh, some of the stories are old. Um, so it was like a mix of everything from the last 13 years. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And is this your first album? My first album, yeah. Oh, nice. Congratulations. Yeah. Thanks. Congratulations. And you, you, so you tended to sell to Netflix, Comedy Central, and. Well, you know, like Fe- Netflix 15, I, mm-hmm. it, different parts of it. Mm-hmm. You know, I tried to get it um, on and. Um, yeah, they didn't want it. Nobody wanted it. So I was like, all right. And how's the reaction been since you put it out? It's been great. I mean, the, um, it, it debuted at number three on Billboard comedy charts, which is kind of difficult, especially because as a woman with no special and no television show, um, it's, it was impressive to a lot of people, which is and even to myself. Um, and people are still sharing it. People are loving it. And, I just have such a mixed bag of fans in not just um, consumers and, you know, day to day, nine to five workers, but um, artists who I respect, you know, um, and that's been kind of cool. So What's the coolest response in, in that vein that you've gotten that you're willing to share. I mean, you know, it's kind of interesting because I, people will see something on my Twitter and they're like, oh, my God. Like someone was like, I can't believe um, Mars Volta gave you a shout out, you know, like, and I'm like, oh, that's cool. But like, I wasn't like a Mars Volta fan as, as a youngster. And um, so it's like, it's very cool for other people. And it's cool that people are now associating me with them. And, um, and you know, even like the one, two, three kid, mm-hmm. it, he's a big fan of mine, which is cool and weird at the same time. Um, Cause it's, interesting watching someone i've i watched as a child as a literal child be like you're so funny and i love your album it's like what that's fucking weird um and then like slug from atmosphere is another one that for me it was just kind of a trip because i was such a little rap underground rap nerd when i was young that it's like whoa this is fucking weird and he's trying to like buy a shirt off me and i'm like no i'll send it to you you know because fuck yeah that's just great for me it's just cool so I don't know. There and then, like you know, Paul F. Tompkins, you know, sharing my stuff and listening to it is fucking cool. And just it's like a, such a trip as a comedy kid, mm-hmm. you know. So I don't know. I, don't, I can't say a favorite, but it's like it's been cool watching it unfold. Yeah, it's really fun. It makes you feel good. And it's always funny. The most personal ones like that. Like yeah, where you're like just the hardcore rap ones. Where, yeah. Um, for me, and still the biggest deal to me is knowing that Jerobi from A Tribe Called Quest listens to this podcast. Oh, that's and cool. And I'm like, what? You listen to, you? I wouldn't even, like, not only comedy, like, you shaped my mindset. Right, Like, right. you know? And it's like the, those type of things that uh, might not mean something to anyone else, but mean the world Absolutely. to you. You know what's funny, actually, is um, I once did it, this is before the album, this is a year, maybe like 2016, I think. I was um, working on a cruise ship. It was like a lot of entertainers from all like different facets. And um, 
it was like a business summit, you know? And so I was fucking shit faced one night and like eating at like the buffet that was open. And, um, and I'm with the other comics and this, and some guy that, you know, just, he just comes up to me. I'm not thinking I'm just drunk. He goes, hi, I'm Mr. Liff and I'm a fan of yours. And I was like, Oh, what? <laughs> and everyone, and the other oh, boys didn't know who Mr. Liff was. And I was like, so drunk that I was like, you guys, he said he's a fan of me and he's him and I'm me. And that's all I was saying, all drunk. Cause I was like, it's just crazy watching it slowly become more and more people that I grew up admiring, you know? Yeah. It's so weird because that's like such a small yeah. circle that, I mean, like, like I couldn't even tell you a song. I know Mr. Liv, I couldn't tell you a song, but that does rem- tell me it was like, yeah, oh yeah, Mod- Modesto. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so it's it's been cool watching like those little moments happen, and now they're 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 not few and far between anymore. Do you know what I mean? Like, I think that's what is kind of the the coolest part of growing and continuing to do what you want to do is like now becoming friends with those people Mm -hmm. you know does that help your confidence when it comes to your comedy i don't think it helps with my confidence it but it certainly helps me remind myself that i'm on the right track so like it's it's good in that way because it's like if people that i always liked are also liking me that's first of all that's correct you know what i mean (laughs) yeah like they should you you hope that the people that influence you would be interested in what the art that you're providing to the world you know that makes sense. I never thought about it like that. Which, I mean, it should. It's, it's what it is. They influence you. So I hope that when I like if I influence somebody younger than me, when they grow up, I'm like, hell yeah, bitch. Like, I like your shit, too, because it should be that way. Who are your biggest comedic influences? Oh, boy. Um, when I was young, I was like obsessed. Like, at, I mean, at, I always say this. At 19, I had a crush on David Tell. He was my big crush, um, which... Now comedy is so popular that so many women like so many different comedians. But back then it was like weird. You know, I I had like one homegirl, Sandy Prudencio, who I'm still friends with now. And she she was like the one girl that made me feel kind of normal. And it wasn't until I was like I was 18 that I was like, oh, OK, there are other girls who like weird shit like me. And um, but she was like one and then it took years to find more. But now that I'm in the in the world of comedy, I feel like all the girls love all the comics, but um, like Bill Burr, Patrice O'Neill, um, fuck. I mean, I feel like everyone has influenced me on some level, you know. Even if I don't think they did, they also did because someone like Joan Rivers might not be like a comedic influence on my style, but her being groundbreaking still contributed to my success, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, those choices aren't very surprising to me, knowing your style. Right. Yeah. I was heavily influenced by East Coast comics. Mm-hmm. They were my favorites. Like, they were definitely the, the people that I... Because they're, you know, what you said, say what's on their mind, sometimes to their own detriment. You know, Patrice O'Neill is such a perfect example of that. Absolutely. And, um, I, but I like that. I like when... I mean, I think comics should kind of push things a little bit. You know? I agree with you. Yeah, I agree with you. I think there is. Um, I I I think sometimes people have that like burn it all Joker mentality right, that I right. don't enjoy. Right. Because to me, there has to be some type of care in what right. you're doing and who you're aiming at right. and, and what you're saying. But um, I I don't think you should be afraid to to say things. I mean, that's one of the things that um I always find weird with my comedy is that people who People who don't pay attention to my comedy are like, you're very cute and you're very like, right. thing. but people who, who like other comics, like stuff like Russell Peters and stuff. I remember one time Russell Peters came up to me and he was like, what's this shit on this thing? And they're just like, oh, it's so adorable. So adorable. He's like, you're sharp. Yeah. You're, you're, you're like, you yeah. say some wild shit. Yeah. It's like, and this is just the way that I present yeah, it. Yeah, the that, delivery. Yeah. It makes it fly under the radar. Yeah. P.S. Did you see the Russell Peters uh, clip of him? Uh, like helping a jewelry thief not get away. <laughs> no. It's crazy. He's in a jewelry store and they show the, you know, the, the camera footage from inside the store. And um, some guy tries to leave the store with, I guess with a ring. 
and the guy the guy who's working or trying to sell to him goes after him but he's an older guy so with, without hesitation russell and the guy who is helping russell who i assume is pals with him because you could tell they're just like you know because oh, russell be there because russell be there yeah <laughs> that's, that's how we should say that um and they help take the guy down tackle him he and i guess uh russell's a trained fighter so he had him in the arm bar it was wild that's crazy it's a really good video yeah, check it no, out you don't try to rob a store if there's a comedian you know. <laughs> well most comedians don't do shit that's true but you never know if it's joe rogan or russell peters yeah i mean he probably didn't know those those guys <laughs> um i had some questions about i don't know where to start with you what do you where do you want to go do you want to go, you wanna go i guess i'm the interviewer yeah it's that's choice. true that is my Dealer's choice. choice um your career i'm sad i didn't get a bubbly well you want one no i don't care you said regular water no i said water you did you did not say there are options. Any specifics. There's always you options. You did not say specific. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm seeing your. Com- I've known you for a while, so I've watching watched you um, as a little bit as your comedy career gets better and better. You went on at midnight, where I think people got a big um, their first like view of you as like, oh, she's funny as shit. Right. And, and then you um, go on. You're written for some shows, and and you do other things. Um, do you enjoy that? Or no, you, I hate it. That's one of my question. Yeah, well, I let's fucking talk hate about writing about for that. TV shows. The money's good. I'm loving the residual checks, but I fucking hate being in a writer's room. Why? Well, I think if I was, I'm I'm realizing if I was in a writer's room with people, like if my friend had a show, it would be a different dynamic. You know, but to write for someone else's idea and what they want, they think and want to be whatever they consider comedy, because as we all know, comedy is subjective. So just because you think something is funny doesn't mean other people are going to find it funny. So it, it feels like you're constantly battling. So you have a hard time writing to someone else's voice or if i don't know them mm-hmm. i do have a hard time with that i'm and i'm realizing that I, it took those jobs for me to realize that that's the benefit of those jobs and i think um which is the theme of this podcast right it's like you take experiences so you can learn something from them whether they're negative or positive and it all ends up being positive but i was very unhappy and in one of the writing jobs i made somebody cry i made a writer cry because like i'm I'm not, I know I'm not easy to get along with. I, <laughs> I know that it can be hard for people who don't know how to work with me. You know, like I can try to work with people, but if they try not, if they're not trying to work with me, then we're going to have a fucking problem, you know? No. <laughs> <laughs> but that's because you get me. Mm-hmm. So you would never have a problem working with me because you get my voice and you also know how to tell me no without without fucking trying to make me feel bad or acting like what I have to contribute isn't good. It's just like, oh, it's not for me. But if you get, if you work with writers who they're constantly cutting out your material and not explaining why, and then even on the shoot date are cutting out your material and they're the ones that decide, and they're not even like the head, like if it was a head writer, that's one thing. But if they're not the head writer, it's like, why do you get to suddenly say my joke isn't funny just because you're an older person and you don't get the reference? That's not the point, mm-hmm. you know? Um, I'm writing it because I know that it works, you know? Yeah, that is a difficult part of this job. With I think um, I haven't done too many writing jobs because it didn't take me very long to figure out the same thing. Right. Like I didn't like, and I was working for my friends. I had right. great, great bosses. So um, they luckily, um, I did get some things out of it. Uh, but I learned like, yeah, I don't like shaping my voice to someone else. It's very right. difficult. My voice is like you you hear my when you hear my jokes whether twitter or whatever you hear my voice right yeah you know so it's hard for me to change that um but i think that i really really enjoyed doing instead was was acting and and just been wondering did you find another focus in what you want to do i mean i love stand up Mm -hmm. like that is my focus and i think a lot of a lot of other people have a hard time with that with it being my focus which i find interesting but I do remember, like, Lori Kilmartin was my mentor for a little while, years ago, before I got writing jobs, before when I was still, like, living out of my car. And she was like, live as grimy as you can for as long as you can handle it. She was like, do it while you're young, because then once you get a taste of, if you take a writing job, you get a taste of that money. If you get an active job, back. you get a taste of that money. It's hard to go back. And um, so I, I took that to heart 
and I waited and waited and waited. And I did in that, even in that time frame, I was like, oh, stand up is a shit I really want to do because there's so much freedom in it. You know, no one's, no one's telling you what you can't say. I mean, there might be some venues that will tell you what you can't say, but then you end up not performing at those venues because you're like, why would I want to perform in a college setting anyways? Yeah. Like those kids haven't lived anything. Yeah. I don't want to tailor my jokes to them. I'm, I, I write humor for adults, you know? Um, but yeah, so I've learned like I'd love to. And then, you know, maybe I'll do acting at some point, but it's not it's not what I'm interested in. Even when I do auditions, I'm like, because you know what? I also respect it very much. I did theater as a kid and I'm like, this takes fucking a lot of work. It really does. And I respect that just as stand up takes a lot of work and I wish actors would respect that, but it is what it is. Um, So yeah, stand up is my number one thing and maybe we'll sell a TV show. I don't know. I'm not really worried about it though. So you're just enjoying, enjoying being who you are right now. Yeah, I always, I a, always enjoy who I am when I am it in that moment. I've never not enjoyed myself. That's a good, how long have you had that mindset? Since I was a kid, since I was a little kid. It's very upsetting for a lot of other people. I find not, that, it's fine, it's hard. Um, so when you have inner happiness, sometimes people don't really like that. Yes, I mean, and that's why I say what I want to say without really care about what the consequences are with, but also knowing that sometimes there's consequences, you know, I'm aware of that they exist, you know? Um, but I try not to make that my focus. You know, I was talking to my, my mom about, um, some, I was talking about somebody having insecurities. Oh, this person has so much insecurities. Da, 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 da. And my mom was like, Oh, but you don't have any insecurities. I was like, I have insecurities. She was like, no, you don't. I was like, no, I have them. I just don't let them run my fucking life. I don't want them to run my life. So people, people think I don't have any, mm -hmm. but of course they're there. Um, but yeah, so yeah, you just don't let them stop you. No, I don't think anybody should, but I understand why people do. You know, it's mm -hmm. tough. It's a very judgmental society we live in. Yeah, it's truly. Um, yeah. I had to forget that I, I have been trained from my mom and from right. other people to be like, don't give a fuck about what other people right. think. And I, under, it took me a long time understand that other people weren't raised like that a lot right. of people are raised to care to, right. to to care a lot yeah and to me that's such a heavy burden I to agree. have on you um which I, I just don't understand that mindset yeah hmm. <laughs> <laughs> i like your shirt what is it uh it's el generico sammy zane from um from um, you know like your shirt your iron iron mic macho man yeah my open mic eagle open macho mic. man <laughs> open mic macho man i don't know what to call him i want to get him on my show you should he would yeah. love to do it no let's book he's it. always getting better yeah how have you been getting better lately oh god lately <sighs> trying to get sleep I think that's very important. I think my mom's secret to looking young is her eight hours of sleep every night. Mm -hmm. Sleep is very important. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm just trying to stick to a schedule because I'm, you know, unemployed, but employed as a comedian. So I just try to have a routine because um, I do love routines and I do love scheduling schedules. Um, so, you know, always trying to read something, always trying to eat as well as I can. <laughs> knowing that my metabolism doesn't isn't really my weight isn't affected by what i eat <laughs> <laughs> so it's really tough um and um yeah i'm trying to like just just be a normal person while getting to be as completely indulgent as i'm allowed to be which is pretty fucking indulgent mm -hmm. um but yeah, I'm trying to, I'm working on my temper. That's the big one. I'm really working on my bad temper because I have one. And uh, that's like the main focus right now. But it takes, it takes all those other things to like make sure that I'm focused on working Has on my your temper. Has temper caused you any issues um, with, in your career and in, in relationships as an adult? I'm sure that they have. But in the moment, I could justify it so i don't really i don't certainly don't live in any kind of regret um i just know that i sometimes get out of hand with my temper and 
I'm I'm the one that ends up feeling like worked up and mm. like ready to murder someone. And they're chilling there. Yeah, I mean, I I always think about this time when I was um driving. I don't know. I don't know if you ever on the 110, um, but there's this section in Highland Park that like the getting like merging into traffic is really dangerous. Mm-hmm. And um, I there was a heavy traffic day, and I was like, "Fuck! I'm just never. If I don't just go for it, I'm just like, we're never. I'm never gonna do it. You know, I just gotta hit hit the gas." And so um, I did that and I found like a decent gap or so I thought. And the woman behind me was zooming and she just honks her horn. And she, after she honks her horn and is like tailing me for a little while, she gets around me and is now like hitting her brakes and doing that shit like in front of me. So I was like, all right, she's being crazy. Let me just move and switch lanes, you know, trying to not be crazy. And then she also switched lanes. And then I was like, okay, is she, was this a coincidence or is she like doing this? I switched lanes again. She does it again. And I was like, oh, this bitch is fucking crazy. I was like, all right, bitch, just fucking, let's get crazy then. <laughs> and then I go back into the fast lane and, um, and, um, oh, fuck, how did we do it? I think, I don't know if I got in front of her or something. No, I was still behind her. So I'm in the fast lane. And I see in the in my rear, there's a car coming. And uh, I, I do some weird maneuver where I switch lanes while that car zips past me and I zip right next to them, behind them. And this chick almost hits the other car that I saw because I was like, I'm going to get behind this car and see what happens. She almost hits that other car. And I'm cracking up laughing. Like, I'm, like I find this very humorous that I'm about to kill this bitch. And... Um, and then she, you know, it's a whole, it's a fucking mess. But nothing, no one gets hit. Nothing happens. Um, but I'm cracking up. And then she like, you know, you know that moment where you almost hit a car and you're just like your heart's, you know, a flutter. And you're like, what the fuck am I doing? I feel like she had that moment because then she took the next exit. But when she took the ex- next exit, I opened the sunroof and I just flipped her off. <laughs> and I was like, after that, I was like, Oh yeah, I have a bad temper. I yeah, need to I need much. to work on this. Yeah. 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 It's a lot. Yeah, when you could have if that went wrong. Oh yeah. Murdered a few people. Well, if it went right, really, when you think about it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it did go wrong, but okay. okay. Positive, negative, it's all perspective, you know. <laughs> well, I mean, it's just that you had the best case scenario. Yeah. So yeah, I that was one of the last times I was like because even when she honked at me, I was like, let me not be, you know, be crazy. Um, but yeah, so that was one of the last times I was like, uh, some, I have some wrong in my brain about my temper. Yeah. I have that too. Sometimes. Yeah. I mean, it takes a lot to get me It takes there. a lot, especially if it's like genetic. Cause it's like my dad had it. My brothers have it. Um, my, my ground, my paternal grandfather had it. Like it's in the family, that bad temper is in the family. And then it wasn't until a couple of years ago that when um because i used to think there was like something wrong with me because of my temper and it took me a long time to realize like this is just part of you this is genetic whatever but it wasn't until my one of my nieces because i have eight nieces and nephews one of them i think she was two at the time she i just was watching her play with her little brother and i don't know where she pushed him on the ground and started laughing and he started crying you know and she was just cackling and I was like, oh, fuck, we're all fucking crazy in this family. And I was like, all right, cool. This is normal. It's normal behavior. Because I didn't have, I was like, ha, she pushed him. And I was like, oh, there's something wrong with me for not being like, don't do that. So. Yeah, sometimes you got to fight against your base instincts. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so, that, so that's that's the one thing that I've, I'm working really, really hard on. But just trying to keep having, like, a routine and a schedule and, um just kind of keeping my mind as balanced as possible is helping me focus on like, okay, when I, when my temper gets worked up, like, all right, this is not, this is a, this is a special moment. Let's sit in this. Let's wait and, and, you know, fill it out, you know, instead of sending the email immediately, sending the text message immediately, going off on someone immediately, I give myself a moment. It's hard. It's it really is. fucking hard. I know. Sometimes you just want to send that tweet. Yeah, there's a lot of times, you know, what I do is I'll respond to someone on tw- on Twitter and I'll say the fucking meanest shit I can think of and I just delete it. Yep, delete it. And it 
I feel relieved on some level, you and know. You got it out. I got it out. At least I got it out, you know. And it existed for a second. It existed for a second. And then you deleted it. And it put a smile on my face. <laughs> and then I deleted it. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a good. I like to do that too sometimes. No, people on Twitter, they're but see, the other thing is I I do get pleasure out of being mean, which is why I like doing stand up so much and like dealing with hecklers and um you know, talking just be, I was I was a it's fucking fun to talk shit. It's fun to talk shit, but I was a bully when I was young, so it's um I've just learned to try to I guess focus and make sure that it's when I'm on stage or you know what I mean, so that it doesn't come off as my whole life and my whole lifestyle. Because it kind of is, you know? Mm. Or I should say it kinda of was. I don't know. But which one is it? I know. We're right there. We're right in the middle. <laughs> if, somebody, if somebody gave me a show that was like, be a bitch to everybody, I'd be like, all right, well, this is my life now. So. <laughs> yeah. But you're also, you're a really good friend. You're really good. I'm a good person. Yeah. Ron. Yeah. I'm a very good person. A lot of people, I don't know, conflate everything with everything else. <laughs> and um, I, yeah, I'm. I'm a good daughter. I'm a loyal friend. Yeah, you care a lot about your family. That's I one do. thing I would say if I were to describe you as someone who is um, very much family oriented. Yeah, I am. Actually, one of the hardest things I had to do recently was uh, make the the decision to not spend so much time visiting my family anymore. Because I was like, all right, Mike, I need to focus on my career super hardcore. And um, it was tough. When I, and when I took that first writing job, that was when I really felt it because it was like, you know, 13 weeks or whatever it was where I didn't go visit my family. And I was like, this is the longest I've gone without visiting my family. And it felt terrible because um, I like being in the kids' lives and I like seeing my mom um, and I like hanging out with my siblings. So um, that was really tough. Last, uh, two years ago? Yeah, well, it's been two years ago. That was really, really tough. Was it helpful for you? Um, what's the positive that you see that you spend less time with them though? Um, I think they value my company more now that I'm gone. Like when I do come visit, everybody does make time for me as opposed to before it was like, sometimes somebody would make time for me. You know, somebody else wouldn't. My mom always makes time for me because she loves when I'm home. You know, I'm, I'm the only childless kid, which she hates. But that also means we get to like go to the mall together and go eat and go do this and go do that. And and um so she always has time for me but my it's my siblings and their kids because you know i want to see the kids more than anything else but it's, it's tough um but what's cool now too is i'm realizing i can text a few of the kids like i didn't realize like that it would it would be better for us anyways to like text mm -hmm. i guess i just didn't want to have that friendship with them but it's been cool, like with my 15 year old nephew, like, send, like sending memes to each other or funny videos or just talking shit or something, you know, yeah, you realize you didn't have to be there to be active. Yes. And like, like, I mean, he FaceTimed me the other day and I was just like, this is so weird, you know, because I, I, I have that relationship with all my friends, but I don't I never had it with the kids, you know. So it's it's just interesting watching them grow up, too. What do they think about your comedy? Well, they're not allowed to watch it, <laughs> but I'm sure they have. I've had to block them on, I think Instagram, I blocked them. I found out one of them was following me and I was like, oh, you follow me? I was like, what's your username? And she wouldn't tell me. And I, I like eventually later that day got her to show me something on her Instagram. And I was like mm, memorizing the screen name <laughs> so I could delete her or block her. So, yeah. Um, one thing I want to talk about with you is that sometimes and you've mentioned it in, in the album um, where you've had a couple of jokes go viral that had then led to a oh, lot yeah. of response from um, like, right wingers. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, one tweet was on Tucker Carlson, like on a Friday night, like right before I got on a plane, a plane that had like one of those rink -a dink planes that has no fucking wireless Internet. So I couldn't even if I wanted to like respond. And like, yeah, it was. um Fuck, what was the tweet? The and I think I think it's the one I talk about on the album. The um they had that baseball game, those senators had this baseball game and mm -hmm. then one of them got shot. Yeah. But nobody died. So I tweeted, if a few old white conservative men have to die in order for the gun control issue to get discussed, I'm willing to take that risk. Mm -hmm. So that went viral. And um it's I mean, I think I'm one of the few comedians that doesn't 
give a shit. Definitely one of the, maybe the only women that doesn't give a shit when people insult them. Um, I, I always try to remind people. I was, I say, my dad called me a cunt when I was 12. There is no hurting my feelings. There is no hurting me. Like, you have to, like, know me deeply well. Like, we have to be in a relationship for you to hurt my feelings. But to, like, just say stuff online, it's so stupid that people, people, like, allow people to have so much power over them. You're letting a complete stranger who doesn't have a fucking avatar, (laughs) doesn't have their real name, doesn't have any personal information, and you're letting them hurt your feelings, you know? It's, to me, it says more about the person, you know? It's like, how, what does it take for you to be strong if you can't even let somebody that is irrelevant have that much power over you you know yeah that's the thing that i I read recently that kind of helped change my mindset is to um someone said that when they have trolls that respond to them like that that they have uh, empathy for them because they know that they're a very it takes a very weak person Mm -hmm. to to not let someone else's ideas just stand you know that you have to comment on it exactly like there's some there's a um faultiness in your your own wiring there's a thing that that that's wrong with you that you feel and you think you're being strong you know but but you're being the weakest and the the other side of that too is um years ago i I tweeted something and i think i used a hashtag like confederate flag or something i must have made a confederate flag joke and um i like that was going viral and then i mentioned it to my brother at dinner and then he was like oh that's interesting and and then like, you know, when you're out eating and blah, 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 and there's a quiet moment, so you just look at your phone real quick. I did that, and I realized my brother, right when I had told him, he went on my page and was, like, trolling people. He was trolling trolls, but I was like, but he was saying things he didn't even believe. He was just talking shit to these people. And I was like, what the hell? I was like, Nick, what are you doing? Stop doing that. He's like, oh, yeah, sorry, I won't do it anymore. And then I kept checking, and he kept going and going and going. And I was like, dude, what are you? fucking doing like stop like this is kind of crazy and i was like and also you're not even saying things you believe and also like if you scroll down you're saying the exact opposite thought you just said to someone else he's like yeah because you just say the opposite thing someone believes and it they fucking lose their minds and i was like wait a minute i was like what do you mean you do this all the time he's like i love going on twitter or facebook and just trolling people and i was like oh my god my brother's a fucking troll (laughs) that was that's a, one of the days I really changed my perspective on trolls mm-hmm. because it's not just that they, I just, someone I love just said that they like going online and saying the opposite thing someone else believes. Mm-hmm. So anytime some troll is online saying some shit to me, I'm like, this could be my brother. Yeah. No, I, I learned a lot of that too from um, a friend of mine, Will, oh, Will Woodruff over there. Uh, he was the same way he just loved the troll on the internet he loved to say wild things he loved to say weird racist things yeah, yeah. and he wasn't like he was the opposite of the racist he was one of the yes. nicest people i've ever met and that's the thing about my brother he's so calm his demeanor is so calm and then the way he talks online you're like this man this person that's talking is fucking crazy and you're like oh i don't that's uh, having that allowed me so much freedom having that moment with my brother gave me so much freedom to just not care or give a fuck what trolls say but i will also say that i have interacted with a troll that um he was like a fan of mine and then i because i make fun of people so i made fun of him for saying something really fucking stupid to me and then he spiraled he fucking spiraled and was just ranting and which is part of why i don't always respond to people you know when especially if they don't agree with me because they're they're that's what they're looking for you know they want to scratch that itch and um then like i think i checked that guy's page the next day to be like this fool is still going at it and i looked at his page and he went on an explanation of having like a mental illness and i was like see this is why i like i can't it it isn't just that i don't i don't think anything of you it's if you have something wrong with you and you know it like why are you subjecting yourself to that shit you know like why why would you want to do that to yourself that's what I don't get. Yeah. So, yeah. Truly. Yeah. There's a reason for us to be on it. <laughs> well, I mean, and that's, I, I think a lot of people forget that, um, like, I get paid to say stupid shit. I also have gotten jobs because of Twitter. Like, it's a profession for us to talk shit, you know? It's a profession to be judgmental. And it's like, and if you want to do it, fucking go ahead and do it. But, like, 
focus, bitch. Focus. <laughs> focus your judgment. Focus in general is what I'm about. Yeah. Oh, I had this Uber ride recently, so I'm going to a robot about it, uh, where this lady was like, oh, oh, she's just, she was super Hollywoody. And she was just like, did you see the Grammys? And I was like, no. And she's like, what, did you see this movie Roma? And I was like, no. And then she was like, Oh, I got, I'm working on my albums, getting ready to come out. And, and then she was dropping me off at the comedy store. And so she was like, but I'm thinking about afterwards getting back in the comedy. Oh, God. I did it once. And, once. <laughs> yeah. And then she was, and then eventually I was just like, yeah, I do. I'm going there now. I do stand up, blah, blah, blah. And then the last thing she said when I got out the car, was, she goes, see you on the circuit. Oh, my God. <laughs> That should be your new album or your new special. <laughs> See you on the circuit. That's so funny. But it's like those people where you know, it's like, I don't I don't know you at all. And I don't wish you any negativity on your dreams or whatever. I hope you're great. But just the fact that you have no focus, that makes me feel like your music is I mean, bad. I, I feel like nothing you're doing is I do wish negativity great. on those people's dreams. <laughs> I wish so much negativity. Because their lack of focus creates more space for me. Hmm. That's a good point. Yeah. I'm but telling you, know, everything has a positive lining. Yeah. Silver lining. Um, do you have, now that you the album is out, okay, okay let's do these questions in order. Yeah. Um, okay, so now you're out here promoting it a lot. Um, I'm on tour. Yeah, and you're on tour. And you're doing a lot of shows. What what What's the promotion cycle like for you? What do you, do you like it? Have you been frustrated by it? What's been going well, on? Well, I it? mean, right now I'm, I'm doing podcasts uh, that I want to do. And that was, first of all, I didn't know when the album was coming out. Like it, it was, there was so much work behind it. We, we taped it last summer, summer of 2017. And then there were so many delays and there was like all this shit building up that I really was like, I don't know when the fuck, which was like, I don't know when to fucking do a tour. I don't know when to schedule anything. I don't know what to do. So it all kind of came together perfectly. And so now I'm just kind of like doing my either friends podcasts or podcasts that strike me as interesting um it's so it's so hard to do radio mm -hmm. i also just don't like doing radio because i also don't like having to watch how i'm talking mm -hmm. which is to me the worst part of doing radio is like you're like am i gonna say fuck right now that's like all you're thinking about is saying not saying fuck um but this has been cool because i'm doing a variety of of podcasts promoting the album promoting the tour and I'm I'm already seeing people at these shows that are listening to these podcasts, which is really really fucking cool. Um, and yeah, it's been fun. And I don't like doing podcasts, so I've like bunched them all together at mm -hmm. once, and it makes it easier because I'll like you know I just came from one, so I'm like in the mindset in mode. Yes, yeah. Because if I'm in a bad mood, oof, yeah, it's bad news. Yeah, I don't feel like talking. Yes, <laughs> I don't feel like thinking. Okay, and then my second question is: What are you after your album? What are your what are your next short-term goals? What are your long-term goals? Well, so with the tour, I'm working on a new set, which has been really fucking cool and fun. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm hoping that we can give it to whoever wants to buy it, whether it's 15, 30, an hour or whatever. Because um, there's already so much strong material. Because like I said, we taped this last summer. So I've had quite a few months to work on some new shit i took like a break for like two months i was like i do not want to think about jokes mm -hmm. and then um now i've been like working on this new set which i'm fucking loving because now that i've dropped all that material i've held on to for so long like i don't feel i don't feel i don't just feel like i have to do that material but it's also i was in such a structure for so long with that material with the closer with the openers with the da 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 and now if I'm fucking trying to figure out what is the closer, yeah. what am I doing for the opening? Am I still talking about being tall? Am I gonna, you know what I mean? Like, well, I get to kind of explore my new set, yeah. which is really fun, especially now with 13 years of comedy behind me, it's moving faster, it's way more experimental, it's so fun. And then if an audience doesn't like the material, I just do crowd work and it's that's so much more fun too. Like it's it's been, it's been fun so far. We've only done what, three dates? And I think we have like, I don't know, 12 more dates to go or 12 more cities to go. And it's been cool watching the, the material develop and also develop faster. Excuse me. And so, um, yeah, hopefully sell something in terms of material for stand up. 
And then, um, and then, you know, I have all these other projects I'm working on that who knows if they'll get picked up, but I'm not really worried about it uh, either on either side. Like if it gets sold, cool. If it doesn't, fine. I'll still keep working. Yeah, it's nice. That's uh, we're kind of in similar boats where, you know, my special came out in, in January and now I'm just like, yeah, I don't even know. But it's it's scary in ways because I'm like, oh, I still have to go out there and fill right. time. But it's also really fun and real thing is like, what do I want to talk about? And and then sometimes I go in and I, go, and I start going down a path and I go, oh, this sounds too similar to what I was writing. Right, and right. I don't want to do that. And, and now my whole thing has been like to try to dig a little bit deeper and to just talk, do more and more about myself and mm-hmm. and and um and look into the why of yeah. things yeah. a little bit more and um and it is fun to go in because you're like oh it took me a decade to get all right. this material together before and then the next thing you know you're like looking like a year later or ha- two years later and you're like oh i'm almost yeah getting there now and now this stuff is better because i already have the skill set right exactly because that's the other thing about all those years is like you're you're still learning how because they like what the first four or five years you're still trying to figure out what the fuck you're doing on stage you know let alone your voice so um yes i agree (laughs) i concur i concur (laughs) where are we at time wise halsey almost an hour hmm Really? Wow. Perfect. Let's see what else I wanted to talk yeah, about. Yeah, ask me mm-hmm. questions. Kind of I, things within. I guess that for my only thing is your writing process. Uh, questions about how do you, how you write. Do you write mostly on stage or do you? I, everything. Mm-hmm. There's. I try to utilize every source of writing style. Um, sometimes I'll tweet something, half-ass it. And then um, I'm like, oh, shit, this got a really good response. Let's let's see if we can, there's something else here. Sometimes I'll just say something online, I mean, on stage. And um, depending on how that goes, go from there. Sometimes it's like knowing something is funny, but like knowing it's also you have to explain it to people mm-hmm. and you have to kind of dissect it. And then mm-hmm. also as you're dissecting it and the explanation and, and it's too wordy. So like, okay, we got to list how many words can we get rid of so that we can get to this quicker. And um, it's also like trying to find, like right now my other obsession too is the ordering of material. Because I have this new, this I invented a word, offendonormative, uh, never been used before. <laughs> um, I've, I Googled it. Go ahead and Google it. I'm the only person that's used it. And um it's like describing people who are offended all the time about everything on behalf of other people when, when no one asked them to be. They're just co- like always offended by everything to the point where it's offendonormative, you know? And, and there's other people that they love that shit too and they all kind of become friends and then they just attack comedians or whatever. And um, I, so it's my word. So I was like, and I have a joke to, to go along with it, um, but... I was like, I had it at the end, towards the end of my set. And I was like, oh, no, I have to do this at the beginning of my set. Like, I just figured out this has to go at the beginning of my set so that when people do resp- respond in an offendonormative way, you can bring I can up. bring it up. Mm-hmm. And um, I, ju- I think I figured that out in Denver because I was like, I was like, oh, I keep wanting to say offendonormative. And it's like, fucking get to it then. Just say it so that when they, when they hear me say wheelchair and they go, <gasps> what is she going to say? Mm-hmm. Uh, I can be like, don't, don't. Don't be a normative. Yeah, there's a lot of trigger. People we get triggered by words. Yeah, they do. And so it's that. It's not just the writing of the material. It's also where to place it, you know, because some of the other writing will, will be affected by wh- where okay. everything else goes, you know? It's a puzzle. It is a puzzle, which is why I like it. I mean, who doesn't love Sudoku? <laughs> um, so, yeah, but I try, I try to, like, I'll handwrite things in, in like a journal and notebook and I'm um, trying to like figure it out and um, but I'll do I'll you know I'll talk it out on stage sometimes if it's not working and sometimes I'll think I figured it out and then months later there here comes a new tag that works better than the punchline you wrote so <clears throat> well, that's the fun though and hearing you talk about yes. it I've seen that that's what you you love the process yes it's fun it's, it is a fun puzzle and I do like puzzles <laughs> um 
that's my only other question is what are your like what else is fun for you now besides comedy what else is fun for me that's a good question i'm trying to figure that out right now too i just moved out of the comedy house with solomon and david mm-hmm. and i'm i'm living alone has been great i haven't lived alone in like 10 years oh, man, so fun. yes and i but when i lived alone 10 years ago i was like you know a prude a virgin who didn't do drugs who didn't smoke and drink and um you know just was like a dork in comedy and now it's like i'm an adult woman and i'm living alone and it's like what does what do i want to do in this place you know and it's been um it's been fun and interesting figuring out again because when i stopped when i started doing comedy i stopped doing everything else Mm. i stopped playing video games i got rid of my television i was like i'm gonna do comedy 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 because i had a day job um back then and then now years 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 have passed and i'm like what What do i like to do Mm -hmm. so it is like making sure i'm like going out dancing and make sure i'm watching the things i want to be watching and um i just bought a ukulele Nice. So I, that's get, in terms of getting better. I'm Do like you move into Silver Lake. Um, no, <laughs> but I've been I've been wanting to do um, music again on stage, and I was like, oh, let's bring an instrument. And because I'm so tall and big, I was like, it'd be kind of funny to have a ukulele. That is kind of fun. You know, yeah. that is kind of also fun because that's a real softening yes which, uh, tool that you could be very useful for you. Exactly, Ron. See, you know, you know, you know, know what you know what's up. <laughs> <laughs> so i was like all right this is interesting and fun and i'm gonna i'm gonna start doing that whenever it gets delivered to the house i'm gonna um start doing that and start writing music because i i used to do like parody songs back 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 in the day and i was like this is too much work it, it, it is it's a lot of work um but now that i'm like my stand-up it moves quicker and faster and and um, i can get a lot done in a shorter period of time um i'm like all right i need something else t- to add to my comedy yeah well also like just finding you finding balance in your life mm-hmm. because there is that time i think for all of us where you have to be obsessive of, about comedy in order yes. to be successful right. in order to to move up and right. and for me it was in order to feed my son right and but then that there's a point where like well if if i continue that way i'm going to burn out yeah you'll lose your mind yeah it's yeah. not going to be fun anymore no it's not fun and you and you're gonna lose that those that inspiration that yeah. you had for yes you know when that moment was i fainted at the airport a couple years ago and it was when i was in between writing jobs i was not saying no to anything and i was doing any stand-up gig i could get my hands on and i fainted at the airport for many a multitude of reasons and um i was like oh i need to say no i'm like financially i'm fine you know, I'm I'm doing well, um, and the only thing that the only reason I fainted was because I couldn't say no. You know, and um, you're right. If like if you will lose a passion that you have, if like that's your only focus, you know. So yes, I agree. Again, it becomes a grind. You yeah. burn. You just it's even the thing you love so much. But when you're traveling all the time mm-hmm. and you're getting, I mean, there's just a time where I was getting. I was traveling so much. I was like my ears were getting clogged so much and I wasn't dealing with it that I was losing hearing Yeah, and I wasn't, I was just not dealing with it. Yeah, of course. Cause you don't just, have the time. Yeah. But it's like, you can, you just have to say no to the thing. Yeah. And, and then you have doctor, the time. <laughs> that's pretty much my doctor said. It was like, you should maybe travel a little less and go to bed. Yeah. 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 I mean, I'm very lucky that I've always liked, like I've always prioritized sleep. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I'm lucky in that sense sleep is wonderful sleep is very good for the body the human body yeah you can't get anything people always, in our society especially there's just like um and you i learned that more from being able to travel overseas it's mm. just being like there's there's um it, it seems like a taboo to relax yeah you know it's the thing of oh you're being lazy yeah and, and it's not like that in europe it's not yeah. like that other places it's like it's built into their day right that you're gonna need some time exactly to relax but we're kind of built to be d- drained yeah i mean we are uh, is uh, it's a capitalist society that we live in mm-hmm. and that is the the byproduct of that and so um yeah i did like yeah yesterday i was like i found some old futurama dvds I mean, I was like, I was like, oh shit, like I'm going to watch these. And I just got high and I was watching, you know, these DVDs and I was laying on my couch like, 
oh my God, I'm being so lazy. I need to get some work done. And I was like, no, you, you know, you booked your weekly show through, I think April or something. Mm -hmm. I was like, you went grocery shopping today. You fucking did some laundry yesterday. I was like, you are fine. But it's like, I, I have to stop and remind myself that mm -hmm. shit because of, yes, because of that. But also when I think back to that time, I, I fainted at the airport. I think about how I would have never been like, oh, I can just relax and watch TV and be high in my living room. That was like, was unheard of to me at that time. Yeah, I've been trying to do that more lately and, and just build it in to my time. I'm going to do yes. that after this podcast. Yeah. It's just like, I'm going to get high and I'm going to play Crackdown 3 for the rest of yeah. the day until yes. dinner. And it's just like, and I won't feel bad about no, it. No, and you shouldn't. You and shouldn't feel bad about it. I used to. And I'm writing that into my sex. I'm like, this is fun. Like, I get high, I play video games, and I pay my mortgage. Yep. And all these things my mom said I couldn't do. Yeah. I, like, I mean, I think that's part of why, for us specifically, it's tough is because... That, that we have been conditioned to believe that that is what a lazy person does because especially even in the movies they do that the guy who gets high and watches tv on the couch all day he usually is unemployed he's mooching off somebody um and he's a piece of shit and everybody wants to kick him out somehow and then you become that but you're like yeah you paid your your mortgage or your rent or any or you just did a weekend and you got paid a fuck ton of money and you're like who fucking cares this is this is what i want to do yeah. It's like that guy had it right. He just needed a fucking job. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's what I think when I watch Uncle Buck. I'm like, Uncle Buck is living great. Mm -hmm. He just need to make a little money. <laughs> just a little money and it's okay. He's great with the kids. He knows how to make a big ass pancake. Yeah. Come on. What more do you need? I don't a, job. <laughs> yeah. a job. Yeah. Yeah. Just the income. Just a little job. Uh, okay. Well, I think it's time to land that plane. And we do that the same way every episode, which is by asking for a piece of advice. Uh, a thing that maybe you've been thinking about. Ooh. Actually. Oh. I'm going to take it back a step. Okay. Because I want to ask you a question. We don't really normally do topical things. Okay. But I want to ask you a question about that Jussie guy. Because that, to me, is the most interesting thing going on in the week. I think it's very funny and also very sad. Um, I think you're right. Um, I uh, Let's set it up for people who don't know. Oh, yeah. Don't, you just go ahead and know. set it up. Um, there's a guy who is on the show Empire, um, a recurring character, I'm guessing, because mm -hmm. um, I'm not aware of him that much, but um he said that he was attacked by two gentlemen who screamed that this was maga country um and then later on we were to find out that those two gentlemen were nigerian and perhaps friends of his and <laughs> that he may have set this up himself um when you go back and watch some videos of him talking you're like mm, this guy doesn't seem he seems like a good actor but he doesn't seem like he's telling the truth and then he also called himself the gay tupac and that's a that's a red flag well uh, I mean, tupac so, was gay so so Tupac was the yeah, gay the, Tupac. Yeah, well, he's saying that he, well, no, I know, the I know bi what he's saying. Tupac was the bi yeah, Tupac. Bi. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so. He just straight dead. <laughs> um, ma there's many things to talk about in terms of that. I, I'm going to start by saying this did ha happen in Chicago and Chicago is not notoriously POC friendly. Um, I even remember in the R. Kelly doc, what, like hearing them say that R. Kelly has friends in Chicago PD. And I was like, oh, no wonder he's been getting away with this shit for so long. They don't give a fuck about these girls because um, R. Kelly's probably paying them or something. Um, so I do want to mention that just because I think it's, it's important to remember that the history in this country of cops uh, treating uh, black and brown people terribly is historically accurate true and relevant um did he lie about it i don't know just i have not been talking about it online because even when it you know was released it was like oh this is a terrible story um and you know whatever guilty or innocent until proven guilty and that's on both sides mm -hmm. um uh did he lie about it? I don't know. I, I haven't been watching any of the videos, so I, I didn't watch that Good Morning America interview. I, I've just not been keeping up. But it's a very strange story. Um, I mean, people were right to wonder. It was like, who carries a noose around? Who even says, this is my country um, and is Nigerian? Um, you know? <laughs> yeah. And one thing my mom brought up, because we're from Chicago, and she was just like, that's not true in Chicago. That's just simply not true. Well, I... 
Kanye wearing the MAGA hat is like proof that that happens. It happens everywhere, whether it's true. Chicago or not. Um, so I I don't know about it being not true anywhere because I, I'm from a red county, so I feel like that shit could happen at any time, anywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's a fucking weird story. It's a weird story. It's, a it's weird so story. interesting to me. Uh, here's my thoughts on it: is that um, I hope it's not true uh, that he's lying about it. It doesn't seem great in his favor yes. that these two men are Nigerian. Um, that just seems odd. Yeah. Um, I agree. <laughs> but it's also not like it's also not like ni- ni- a lot of Nigerian dudes are like the most uh, progressive men we've That's ever true. met. But here, my question though is that if two, if the police ask me a question about who attacked me, and it was two Nigerian men, the first thing I'm gonna say is they sounded Nigerian, because if they yelled something at me, they probably sounded Nigerian. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if I would. Uh, I don't know. I guess in those situations too, it's like if you're getting if if you're getting your ass whooped. I don't know how much you would even be able to decipher what's what. I would at least what. feel like they sound foreign. Yeah, I agree. Yes. But I don't know if they would say they were Nigerian. Yeah. That's but I do point. would be like they had accents. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So that part was crazy to me. And and, and the whole thing to me about them, it's a lot to unpack. There's a lot to let's, unpack. Let's say he's lying. Okay. Allegedly, he is lying to us. Um there's so much to unpack in that it, it is so dangerous and so yes. so careless. Also, the best Empire episode we've ever seen. Yeah, it's like a great episode yeah. of Empire. But it's just dangerous in the Get world. Get him in the writer's room. Those things are true. Those things do happen. Yeah, yeah. I, I travel a lot and I travel a lot to, to places in the South and other things. And I have personally noticed an increase of... Um, I would just say people being brazenly open about me not happy, them being unhappy with me being in their presence. Right, right. You know, whereas at a time where maybe I could pick up an inkling of it, right. people are being more straight up, right. being like, I don't like you here. Right. And, and um, so for people to then do something that's false and make give it, the other side ammo to be like this isn't happening people right. are making this up it's so careless and crazy but then there's also to me this mindset of like what's the pressure that he put himself under and the mindset that he put himself under where he was like this is gonna be the thing i need to keep my career together and keep my career afloat if he's lying i mean that's why it for me there's too there's too many questions. That's why it's like I haven't been keeping up with it to be honest because when it broke I was I think I you know I retweeted the story just as we all retweeted the story or shared it maybe. Um but like I once people were like it's fake. It, but it's it's also like a specific type of person that wants it to be fake, mm-hmm. you know? And um so and they're so happy now that it might be fake, which is also so weird, you know? Um, because it's like they're not happy when our president makes up a lie and you know is fact checked no one's like so excited about that so it's it's just it's a lot of weird energy being put into the story um and it, but you know that's why entertainment is so fascinating to me celebrity is so fascinating to me uh, i have no interest in that world personally and getting there i have no interest in it because of shit like this because people become obsessed with this story and the story exists because Jesse has power on either side, whether it's true and they attacked him because he's famous or gay or whatever, or if it's fake and a lie, he had the power to tell this lie. Like either way, that's it's proof that being a celebrity is fucking weird. Being a celebrity is weird. That's true. And if it is true, I just want to always stick by my Thing I always believe, which is just don't trust people named Jussie. <laughs> That's not That's a funny. real name of a person. Yeah, I mean it's a strange name. That's um, a, that is a just sounds like sus, yeah. which is it's sus. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you for humoring me w- w- with that. Sure, I, I mean, had, I, 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 I want to make sure with that. we talked about the Chicago PD, but yes, I it is a strange story. No matter what you look at it, I just I, I'm 
questioning the people that are like excited if it's not real. I'm like, that's just a weird, rea- like emotional yeah. reaction to have. To me, it's just cra- crazy yeah. if it's not real. It's yeah. like you, there's no, to me, if it's not real, the amount of like, what amount of positives did you think you were going to get out of it that would undo anything that if people found out? You know, it's just like, weird. Like if people find out, it just does so much harm to your career, right? To your life, to and then to just a whole race of people. Yeah, oh yes, Ra- a race of people and a group of people because you know it was supposedly yes homophobic as yes, well. Absolutely. So it's just like you're doing harm. To the very people that you should be standing up for. Yeah, I mean, light skin dudes need a lot of attention. Yeah, so. that's true. That's really what's going on here. At the end of the day, <laughs> <laughs> light skin dudes named just can't be trust. <laughs> oh my god! So, man, the plane. For, I love how you really set me up for this topic of conversation. Something I've been avoiding talking about online. I think about it well, we better to talk about it in person so we can give full sound bites. Yeah, just not a, a, I mean, not really when it's being recorded, but all right. I think I did a good job of handling my yeah, perspective. Who, who gonna get, um, I guess you do get a lot of flack, so. I get I get flack from both sides. Yeah. I'm honestly used to it at this point, which is why I created the term offendonormative because it happens on both sides. People get mad and offended about the wrong shit at, at the wrong times and then are happy about the wrong things, in my yeah. opinion. You, you know? talk about it in, your, in the um, album, which I like is that, um, yeah, people get offended by the word uses instead of people's hearts and people's actions. Yeah. And that's one of the things, I think that's one of the things where we're friends right. is that we both know, um, n- like, you know, we're both open to be like, oh, I'll call you a bitch or I'll call right. you this or do that and it's fun and it's that, but you know my heart. Right, right, and right, that, right. And that is something that... Um, well, I know your heart is your son yeah. and that is important to me as a person when people move with other people in mind and i think more so in men it they do need children to move a little more thoughtfully um i don't think a lot of women need that there are some that do but that is why we have remained friends i will say that (laughs) i'm sure you would be a real piece of shit if you didn't have your kid yeah possibly yeah you would um it's quite possible i'm telling you you would okay I'm not disagreeing, but I'm not 100% on your side. <laughs> <laughs> so, piece of advice, thing that's been on your mind, thing you just want to share uh, with the Getting Better universe, which I guess is now Funch of Tears. Funch of Tears one. Is that the name? I guess. Oh, I didn't well, like it. I like Mary Mint Marauders more. The what? Mary Mint Marauders, because oh. that's just the name of my company. Okay. But that's just, yeah, I can well, see. I'm very biased. I'm very biased. You're very biased. Yeah, Funch of Tears. It's a capitalist perspective to have that yeah. you name your company that and you expect your fans to want to be named after that as well. <laughs> You, it's a democracy to allow them the freedom to make their own choices yeah. Ron Funches. Yeah, they can also just go by their own names. I yeah, don't but they care. obviously want to band together and show them some support and wear some kind of merch that you can sell. Yeah, it's fun. Okay, well then I guess See? it's going to be like me that? dressed up as a three musketeer or mouse or something. You I should just know. do a three-headed run. <laughs> and then like have one as like a luchador or something and one as like a wrestling. All the sides of me. Yeah, all the sides of you. Nice. And that's your three musketeer or like whatever that. it's called. See? Sure. You're welcome. Was that your advice? Yeah, that was no. It wasn't. <laughs> that was business advice. Um, what's my advice? You know, I'm. I find it fascinating when people um are constantly sharing inspirational quotes online, and they they say be yourself or whatever the fuck you decide to post or whatever inspires you. It, you have to remember that people that think and act differently than you are also inspired by that and to keep that in mind which i guess also comes down to the offendonormative thing where it's like pay attention to how if something inspires you it could possibly mean that someone like for me the opposite person of how i think is donald trump right how he's just so careless and just doesn't make any decisions that don't benefit him um but me and him could both look at an inspirational quote and both be inspired by it we could both look at an inspirational quote that's like, if you can't accept me at my worst, you don't deserve me at my best. Me and him can look at that quote and be inspired by it, which is why those quotes are fucking bullshit. And I don't think anyone should be inspired by random shit that 
could mean something to anyone. Hitler could be inspired by that shit. You should be inspired by yourself and what motivates you. Hitler's and like, I should hang in there, baby. <laughs> <laughs> and that's my advice where I wish people would be more inspired by themselves. I wish people would be more vo- motivated to just be b- a better version of themselves at all times. And the only thing to motivate you is you. That's what I think. I think people should stop looking to celebrities, which is exactly what we talk about. Cele- ce- being a celebrity is such a fucking weird thing. Like you have to stop looking at these people because they're so fucking flawed and um, stop being inspired by people you don't know and be inspired by yourself, a person that you do know. I like that. That's my advice. That's pretty great advice. Thank you. Yeah. Keep your inspiration personal. Yeah, you should. I like that. All right. Well, I just want to say um, thank you for coming Thanks here. Thanks for having thank me. Thanks for having the time and being open. And the woke um, bully. Yeah. People go get the album. Come see me um, on tour. Can, yeah. And where can they find you? At marcellacomedy dot com. At Marcella Comedy is all my um, social media as well. And go see her. She's yeah. wonderful, great comedian, and you will enjoy her. And just thank you for being my friend for so long and for, for talking shit when you need to talk shit. <laughs> and, 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 and. I've said some wild shit in your backyard. That's mm-hmm. for sure. Yeah, and it's fun. Enjoy it, and you're always welcome here. Thanks. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me, Ron. Anytime. Bye.